first lesson of Vulcan, it's hard. Second lesson, it's fast. Yeah. My name is Marty, and welcome to a video about Vulcan and why, who's it for? So what is Vulkan exactly? It's an application programming interface that's used with programming languages such as C or C++. It's essentially a set of tools that allows computer programmers to create graphics on the screen easier. It's primarily designed for games, but it's not limited to games. Essentially anything on your computer screen that is graphics can be done with Vulkan. It's similar to APIs that you may have heard of, such as DirectX or OpenGL. What was that? A jar of mayonnaise? Did it crack? No. <laughs> it was on sale for uh, three ninety nine. That was a jar of mayonnaise because my room is in the basement, so someone dropped a jar of mayonnaise down the stairs and it hit my door. Good stuff. Now Vulcan is difficult to get started with. If you've done any research online, there's this general consensus out there that Vulcan is a bad API for beginners and beginners shouldn't touch it. I'm inclined to agree with that. From my own experience, from what I've done with Vulcan, it's a jolly rip roaring good time. The big deal with Vulcan of why it's not geared for beginners is, I think the biggest part is that it just takes so long before you can actually see something and that really is discouraging for beginners. Let's uh, delve into an example. So, how many lines of code would you think it takes to make a simple triangle on your computer screen? Is it 10 lines of code? Is it 12 lines of code? Is it 100 lines of code? Or is it 1,100 lines of code? Yeah, it's 1,100 lines of code to get a, a simple triangle on screen. And the reward is a delightful triangle to look at after a thousand lines of code. From my experience, I've found that programming is a largely, it's a visual learning process. I learn best through what I can see. So if I can actually see what my code is doing on screen, I tend to learn it better. And that's probably why I enjoy making games so much. It's because I just I enjoy seeing what's happening. The first 900 lines of Vulcan code that you'll write will be mostly just setting up a ton of stuff that is handed over to you like GPU memory synchronization a concept that is actually dealt with for you in OpenGL is now handed to you in something like Vulkan to get a program that can display anything you have to set up the debug messenger because debugging is seriously downsized in Vulkan you have to set up your physical device create a logical device create a swap chain construct some quick little image views here throw on a render pass load your shaders bind all that together in the graphics pipeline, make some frame buffers, create a command pool, construct vertex buffers, create command buffers, and then create sync objects, and then you can actually see what is going on. Sound like a lot? It is a lot. You know, when I was going through the tutorial for this, just to get this far, it almost felt like it was some sick joke and you'd never see anything on screen. But after you get over the initial hump of getting to that point where you draw the triangle, from there, loading a model and loading textures to that model isn't all that difficult. From those thousand lines of code, you only have you only have 700 more to write before you actually get a model loaded to the screen. And there you go, you can see that after 1700 lines, you got yourself a model loading. So the initial hump of it, it's pretty daunting. It does get easier as you go, you see more visual progress. So I think that helps. You compare that 1000 lines of code to something like OpenGL, which I'll just open up real quick. You can see that essentially the same thing can be achieved in only 200 lines of OpenGL code. Let's run it, see what we got. Pretty much the same thing, just a little square, color a little different. Not square, that's a triangle. That's part of the reason why it's definitely hard for a beginner to get started with it. The sheer amount that the programmer has to set up is it can it can be staggering at first and it and it kind of hands you well a major headache with setting up all that stuff and a major opportunity to really optimize your program if you're looking for high octane computer graphics vulcan is the way to go if you're a beginner starting out i wouldn't recommend it and i wouldn't recommend opengl either to a beginner i'd recommend something more high level so it's distance further from the hardware making it slower but easier to learn you know some apis that i would recommend or would be like SDL or SFML for beginners, it's great to get started because in less than a hundred lines of code, I've got 60 here and then a couple in the other classes I've got here, you can get textures loading up, a, a, a basic game working. Of course, this is just a prototype, so nothing really works in it yet. You can actually see 
texture is being drawn to the screen and it can get up and going much faster. Programming is fun and it should be a fun experience learning. If you're not enjoying programming, you're probably using the wrong API. You want to level up as you go. So you start small and then you go more advanced and delve deeper and deeper into graphics concepts until, well, until you've just exited the matrix. Now, the second reason why Vulkan is hard for beginners to learn, and hard for really anyone to learn, is the debugging is a lot more limited than in OpenGL, or I believe DirectX. I haven't done much in DirectX. If you guys know about that, just feel free to let me know. Now, that's a blessing and a setback at the same time, because with Vulkan, at runtime, there is zero debugging enabled, zero. There's, however, these things called validation layers, which allows you to do some debugging when you're actually making your app. Not a lot of debugging, but that allows you to, again, squeeze out more performance out of it because it doesn't have to deal with debugging stuff when you finally got it ready to release. And then OpenGL is kind of like just the reverse of that. It always has this debugging enabled that makes it easier to program in, but slower to actually run. If it's so hard, why should you use it? First of all, performance. It's much faster than OpenGL. If you guys want to check out some benchmarking stuff, I'll leave stuff in the description. You can go check out how Vulkan compares to OpenGL and DirectX. It is substantially faster than OpenGL, and it can be faster than DirectX or equal to DirectX in speed. And that would be DirectX 12, of course. So that's a huge key. And then what also comes with that is cross-platform compatibility. As they say, my kingdom for a port. Vulkan supports a wide variety of platforms. It supports Windows 7 and up. It supports Linux, Android, Mac, iOS, and of course, Xbox, PlayStation, all the consoles and stuff like that. Google's new Stadia gaming feature, which is cloud-based gaming, runs on Linux and runs on Vulkan. OpenGL is also cross-platform in that sense, similar to Vulkan. The advantage is Vulkan is faster. So then you say, well, how come you wouldn't just use DirectX? The reason you wouldn't use DirectX is because DirectX is Windows only. It's kind of Microsoft's whole shenanigans there that they want to keep it all to themselves which is fine, we got Vulkan now. So it's a bit later to the race than some of these other APIs, such as DirectX, that was in the 90s, same with OpenGL, also in the 90s. The advantage of it being new is that it carries a lot less legacy code and, and is less bloated than OpenGL has become over the years. It's developed by the Kronos group, same guys who make OpenGL. Vulkan is developed by Kronos. Now, something interesting with that. We all know that Star Trek has a character named Spock who is a Vulcan, and What's more is in the Star Trek universe, there is a planet called Kronos, and it's spelled exactly the same as Kronos Incorporated. Coincidence, or do we have a conspiracy theory? Yeah, I don't really know, it could be just a coincidence. If you're thinking I'm a Trekkie, I'm not. I, I just, just happen to know that. So then who should use it? To be clear, it's not for everyone. It really depends on what you're making. If you're making a little 2D platformer, uh, that, that'd be a no-go. That's a lot of raw computing power that you're just nestled into your hands that you're not really sure what to do with especially for a 2d platformer it's a serious overkill if you're making a game and you need performance and you also want cross-platform compatibility vulcan is the ticket to go with it's got the speed of direct decks combined with the compatibility of opengl it's a pretty nice combo so i hope you enjoyed the video i think vulcan is a great api i'm enjoying learning it it's not for everyone and it's not for everything but in its place it's very powerful and it's fun to learn too. Once I learn it and get a good firm grasp on it, I'll probably start a series on it. So that should be fun, and then we can create 2D and 3D games with Vulcan, which would be cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Code like, and I will be seeing you next video.